You know. No more bleeding cowboy. <laughs> Don't use that font anymore. Don't use it. <laughs> God, stop using bleeding cowboy. Right, I, don't even, I don't even know that one, but I don't want to know. Yeah, you I don't. don't. Yeah. I, You've seen it. You've, uh, trust I, me. I'm sure I have. Comic Sans was the one oh, for... Oh, yeah. man. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Words of Fang. We are here at the Between the Waves music conference in Madison, Wisconsin. Uh, and if you are not here, then you're missing it. But you can come next year, check it out, btwmadison.com. And we're gonna have a bunch of amazing special guests talking music business, music industry, all that sort of stuff with us. And today we have the lovely Nancy. Nancy, would you please, for the people who are not uh, familiar with what you do sure. and what you're all about, let us know sure. what you do. I'm, I'm Nancy Moran. I'm. I'm a singer-songwriter by trade. I mean, that's really how I got into this mess mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> of a business. Um, I like to write songs. I like to sing. I like to perform. That's what I do. I traveled for, I guess what I'm kind of known for is I traveled for about eight years with a group called the Four Bitchin' Babes. Oh. We played all over the U.S. Um, in mostly performing arts centers. So I like to tell people that I've played everything from like a coffee house with like no people mm -hmm. to selling out 2,000 seat performing arts centers. So and it, kind of everything in between. Um, so that's really my background. I got off of the road in 2012. And so what I mostly do now is I'm an artist development coach. Okay. Which is a big term that doesn't mean a whole lot yeah. of things to a lot of people. Um, it's a big term that in my mind means I help other people create their own careers. I, my career was always very left of center, mm -hmm. very not mainstream. I did <laughs> I did everything in really weird ways. Yeah, yeah. And um, so I'm really good at thinking outside the box and helping other people do that. You do not have to go mainstream. You do not have to be a major label artist to make a living in music. And that's what I that's what I like to help people do. Excellent. So if somebody comes to you as a as as an as an artist coach and says, you know, hey, I, I wanna I wanna make my band go big. Like, what, what's the first couple of things that you would you know look at for any given artist to oh. to kind of help you gauge you know where you want to go? It, that's a big question. I know <laughs> that's a big question, and the reason is I deal with some people who do some really strange things. Okay. So let me give you an example. I have a client who is. A Sufi, um, a, a Sufi what do you, minister, I guess you would call her. She teaches yoga. She's an astrologer, and she does music, and she oh. wants to kind of put it all together. Oh yeah, right. Th that, like that normal. genre that everyone's yeah, heard right, of, right. you know. And so I look at somebody like that, and most people go, "What the hell? <laughs> what, what, what do I do with this? Oh my god!" I look at that, and I'm like, "Totally cool. Yeah. I, I totally get it. We yeah. can make this happen, right?" Yeah. So. The thing about being in a really strange niche like that is it really narrows things down for you quickly, mm -hmm. right? So she's got a very, very specific niche. And that's a great thing in today's environment mm -hmm. because you don't want to be all things to all people. That's like the worst thing you can do as a musician. What you want to do is narrow, 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 narrow. And it sounds counterintuitive to most mm -hmm. people. They're mm -hmm. like, no, that'll just like make my audience smaller. No, it really won't because how many musicians are out there speaking to her audience? Sure. She's sure. probably it. So She probably has that super fan who loves the that sort of Sufi, right. you know, whatever all that stuff she right, does. Right. You know, she's looking for people who are like her. Yeah. That's what she's doing. So um so that's what I would do with, with pretty much anybody is we would figure out what is your niche, mm. right? How can you sort of narrow things down and really focus? How can you, uh, I think one of the biggest things people need to do is define their music. Mm. You know, the worst question that any musician <laughs> likes to be asked is what kind of music do you do, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. We all hate that. Who do you well, sound like? I don't sound like anybody, anybody. man. <laughs> I'm my own thing. Nobody's ever come before me that sounds like me. Right, I'm completely unique. Completely unique. Totally, yeah. totally, yeah. You ever seen this chord before? <laughs> Right. I, hate, I hate that answer. Right, <laughs> so. right. But what I try to tell people is when people ask you that question, it's for context and context only. So 
I know what kind of music I like, right? Mm -hmm. I know the types of things I like to listen to. So if I ask you what kind of music that you do, mm -hmm. and you tell me something, it tells me, is this something that I'm interested in? Is this the type of music that I listen to? Is it even close? Or is it so far to one extreme that I'm like, I wouldn't even touch that. I wouldn't even go there, I you know? See. And it's, it's not a qualitative thing. It's not a, it's not a comment on the quality of your music. Mm -hmm. It's just I'm trying to put things into context to know how it relates to me because that's, that's how we do everything in life. Everything we're, we're doing, we're gauging it in relation to ourselves. Mm -hmm. It sounds selfish, but that's what we're all doing. You know? gotcha. So it's, it's just a context thing. So when somebody asks you that question, you have to have an answer. And uh, one of my favorite stories to tell is I was at a music conference. This was years ago mm -hmm. um, and guy came up to the table and I was talking to him and I said what kind of music do you do my favorite answer ever he said psychobilly folk punk <laughs> <laughs> and I literally was like I yes. have no idea what yes. that is and I so want to hear that I mean yeah. is that like the greatest answer that, that's amazing I want to hear it now right too. right yeah I was like what the hell is psychobilly is folk that? punk I don't yeah. know but oh my god I have to hear it uh -huh. And I, so I thought that was a brilliant answer, and mm -hmm. I love to give that as an example. It's like, if you're having trouble coming up with a genre, make your own genre. Make it interesting enough that people go, wow, what is that? I want to hear that. <laughs> and you will instantly get people's attention. I, I mean, this is years ago, and I'm still telling the story. I yeah. still remember that term, and I have no idea if it was any good or not, but... <laughs> It's a great answer. That's cool. Great answer. All right, another big question yeah. for you. Okay. Um, some people will say that now is the worst time to be a musician. Some people will say now is the best time to be a musician. What What is your thought on that? I totally think it's the best time yeah? ever. And yeah. why? Because there, everything is available to you right now. Everything is open. E everything is on the table. Um, and really, the, the playing field is flat. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why people think it's the worst time, you know, because I think it's, I think in some respects it's more difficult because the onus is on you, the musician. Sure. It's totally on you as the artist. It's up to you to take the bull by the horns and make or break your own career. Nobody's going to do it for you. No one's going to pluck you out and discover you. That's just mm -hmm. not going to happen mm -hmm. anymore. And I don't think that's a bad thing, you know. I, I just, I think... Everything is available to you right now, so I think it's awesome. But uh, it's really going to depend a lot on your attitude mm -hmm. and how how good you are at creating your own career. I mean, you've really got to be self motivated. And for you know, there are a lot of people out there that just aren't. Right. They just aren't. You know, yeah. and that that's a lot tougher. So if you don't have anybody in your band that's self-motivated, you got to find somebody. Yeah, you do. You know, get a manager or something. Um, on this channel specifically, we focus a lot on, uh, and I think you know, you, you spoke to it earlier. You know, that with the internet, with in, in today's you know environment, you can essentially learn anything, do anything. So a lot of our stuff is focused on DIY. Yeah. You know, focused stuff. What's one thing that you know that you you either used to DIY, currently DIY? I mean, I suppose that's a tough question because you know, it was, with an artist development, is is it that everything you do is DIY? Everything. I was I was just gonna say. Yeah. Uh, pretty pretty much, I'm still DIY. I mean, you're 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 looking at the marketing <laughs> department. You're looking at the booking department. You're, sure. You're. I, I'm I'm it. My my husband and I we run our company. It's just the two of us. Um, and we've been that way for what th almost thirty years, I think. So. Okay. Uh, Maybe let me put it to you in a different yeah, way. Yeah, sure. Is there is there something that you think every band or every singer-songwriter should always DIY? Um, I don't know if they should do it for forever, mm -hmm. but I, I actually do think it's really important that bands do their own booking, especially initially. Everybody hates booking. I know that. I hate booking. I teach booking and I hate booking. Everybody hates booking themselves. They just mm -hmm. do because it's awkward. Um, and it would be great if we could have somebody else do it. But the reason that I think it's so important is because I think if you don't do your own booking, you don't understand what you're asking somebody else to do. Mm. You don't understand what's involved. You don't understand the type of information that they need to properly book you. You there's just a there's a whole long process, and I think you might get screwed if you don't do it yourself first. And so you don't. 
if you don't do it, you don't know what you're wanting someone else to do right. properly. So you have that experience, yeah. you kind of know. Yeah, and I could say that with probably a lot of different things too, okay. but I think booking is really, really key. Um, now, once you've done it and you've got it down and you've developed some of those relationships, the, the thing is, at that point, I think you could give it away. It's really hard to find a very good booking agent. That's the other reason why I think you should do it I yourself. Know. I know. <laughs> I, I've, I've worked with some of the worst ever. I've worked with some of the worst ever. Um, and so just another reason why I think people should do it themselves. But at some point, I think you could potentially give that away. Mm -hmm. The funny thing is the more you do it and the better that you get with it, the more relationships you have created, the easier those bookings are going to be to do. Mm -hmm. And you might not really need someone to do it for you at some point. Um, it's a lot easier nowadays to do your own booking. Like venues are, uh, they're okay with talking with the artist. Mm -hmm. Again, years and years ago, they didn't really want to talk to the artist. They wanted to talk with a booking agent or manager. They, they didn't want to have those hard conversations with the artist directly, right? Now everybody's independent, everybody yeah. is. So they're used to having those conversations. It's not that, that tough anymore. And I think it's, on some level they start to like it. Mm -hmm. They like to know the artist um, as a person and, and have those conversations. So I don't know, you might, you might just be able to keep it for forever. Okay. Is there something that you think bands shouldn't DIY? Mm -hmm. Or maybe something you know, like a low level band shouldn't DIY, maybe not at first. You know, maybe eventually they can, but yeah. start off with. That's a good question. Um, yeah, you know what? Now that I think of it, <laughs> I, had to, I had to really like process this. And I'll tell you what they shouldn't do if they're not good at it. Okay. They shouldn't do their own marketing materials, like your own photographs, your own design, your own graphic design. Mm -hmm. Everybody mm -hmm. thinks because they've got a computer and a cell phone that takes a snapshot you know that they can they that they can create good looking graphics and a lot of people can't i won't say most people but i will say a lot of people can't yeah and, and some people can some people are, are creative in like lots of different areas right yeah. awesome if you can do that yeah. but if you can't you really need to pay the money for it and the reason is i don't think people think about this they're going to see you before they're going to hear you. Mm. Your music is not gonna be the first thing that they know about you. They're gonna see a picture, they're gonna see a graphic, they're gonna see a logo, they're gonna see an ad, they're gonna see something, they're gonna see your CD package. Mm -hmm. Oh, God help me, have somebody design your CD package. Mm -hmm. you know? No more bleeding cowboy. <laughs> Don't use that font anymore. Don't use it. <laughs> God, stop using Bleeding Cowboy. Right, I, don't even, I don't even know that one, but I don't want to know. Yeah, you I don't. don't yeah. I, You've seen it. You've, trust I, me. I'm sure I have. Comic Sans was the one <laughs> oh, for... Oh, yeah. man. Yeah, that was a bad one. That was a really bad one. Um, so, yeah, please, just don't, don't do your own graphics unless, like, you really, really know what you're doing. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's just going to set you up. It's going to make you not look professional. That's the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a huge, huge giveaway that you are amateur. And you, you don't want that. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, so, you know, a lot of people talk, uh, you know, and I think we've talked about this uh, in a roundabout way, that nowadays is this sort of new music industry, you know, that, that things have sort of evolved from the way that it used to be back in the day with the gatekeepers and things right, like that. Right, right. Do you think there are any vestiges of the, the old industry, quote unquote, that are still very much needed in today's uh, new music industry? For, for example, like, you know, uh, labels or professional booking agents or managers, right. or do you think any, any of that is still absolutely critical? Hmm. Well, I don't know. I, I kind of go back and forth about this because mm -hmm. like I said, I think there was some benefit to actually having those gatekeepers on a certain level. I think it does raise the bar slightly, although I, I do think they sort of boxed things in, mm. um, and that's what I don't like. Um, I, I think as an artist, you need someone else on your team. Mm -hmm. um, and that, I don't know who that person needs to be necessarily. It might be different for different artists. It might be a manager. Mm -hmm. um, it might be someone, just a booking agent, or like even just a really good personal assistant. 
It might be a coach. It might mm. be, you know, but just someone else who's there to bounce ideas off of, to make sure that you're not veering from a path or going down, you know, a wrong direction. Right. I just think it's really good to have another person there who has your vested interest in mind. Um, and I think because, let's face it, the music business is difficult at times. Mm -hmm. And it's really, really easy to get down on ourselves. It's really uh, easy to get depressed when things aren't going well, right? And we need that person to say, it's all right, it's all right, this happens, it's okay, it's not you, it, you know, or whatever. Just somebody else to kind of help uh, lift you along in those times when it's gonna be, it's gonna be rough. Cause I'm telling you, everybody I know, and I know people at all levels, mm -hmm. all kinds of levels, and everyone I know goes through those times and they're hard. So I think it would be nice to have somebody on your team, but um, I'm, not, I'm not sure I know exactly who that person would be. Okay. Um, moving away, uh, maybe into the, uh, into the social media side of things. Okay. Uh, with with the with social media being such a thing nowadays, um, and artists being so accessible, yeah. Um, do you think do you think that accessibility is necessarily is is it a good thing or a bad thing compared to like the old days where you had mystique Ooh. about a certain artist? Like you know, yeah. I, if there's somebody I like, I can chat them like right, right. now, and they right. probably will answer me. Right. You know. So is that a good thing or a bad thing? Um, it's a good question. I I think overall it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. I do think it's a good thing. Um, I think where it goes awry <laughs> is that I think artists can be maybe too forthcoming, mm. and especially on social media. And I think you, I think you need to hold back a little bit. I don't. I'm not sure you want every single one of your fans to know every single thing about you. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe that's just me. I don't know. Maybe I'm just being cautious, but. Um, yeah, I, I think there's, I don't know. I, I liked the mystique. Maybe that's just because I came from that, that era. I liked a little bit of mystique and people, uh, having an idea of what it is to be an artist, mm -hmm. artist, yeah. quotes, you know, yeah. um, and we lost a little bit of that with, but I think overall it's a good thing because I, I think what's happening now with music is there's so much more direct connection mm. you know with between artists and their fans there's just a a really good strong connection mm -hmm. and i think that's positive i think in, in life in general that's just a great thing mm -hmm. do you think that uh, the is, is do you think that's where uh, the industry is going in terms of like financial support, the direct connection between fan and band. So I'm talking like Kickstarter, right. Indiegogo, Patreon. Do, do you foresee that becoming the new model or do you think it's still gonna rely on that sort of like, I buy music, I go see no, I show? Think I kind of think we've already seen that they don't buy music. <laughs> Sorry. That is a good point. <laughs> I that think, is a I very good point. I think we've already seen that, which is, uh, and, and that's a hard one for a lot of us to get over. Mm -hmm. um, I think we just have to realize that they're paying for different things now. Mm. It's not that they won't pay for anything. It's that m music somewhere along the line lost its value. And, and we sort of allowed it to lose its value, we in general. Mm -hmm. um, so, okay, I, I don't think there's any coming back from that part. Okay. So, but that doesn't mean you can't make money as a musician, it doesn't mean that we're never going to have artists again, you know, making, making a living. It just means that people are paying for different things. And I think right now, um, I don't know that this will last forever, but I think right now what people are paying for are experiences. Hmm. That's why live music right now is hugely popular. Um, yeah, okay, you can get a download for free any time of the day or night, you know, mm -hmm. a million times over, but you can't get that live experience without mm. paying for it. And, and I think people do see the value in that. And again, that's that connection thing. Right. See, that's that. that it's one, all coming back. Right, it's all <laughs> coming back, right. Um, I think that's what people are really desiring. And I think that is entirely because of social media. Mm. We are doing everything online. We're doing everything virtually. 
all of our friendships are virtual. You know, and it's just, it's kind of weird, actually. Um, so I think what people are really missing are those true connections. Mm. The, this, this right yeah. here, this, this one-on-one -on -one time right here, you know? We're, we're not over Skype. Right, 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 right. right. <laughs> we're actually sitting in the same room right what? now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, green screen technology has come very far, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I do. I, I really think as human beings, we are missing this right here. Sure. And so that's what people are willing to pay for. So mm. live music or any type of live experience. You know, a lot of bands go on cruises. They have right. fan cruises, yep. right? You know, 70,000 tons of metal. There's, there's that. <laughs> Did you know? Did you know about the metal cruise? No. Oh, I didn't know it's about so that great! One. Oh my god! Yeah, giant cruise ship, like yeah. three stages going at the same time. Amazing. Yeah, there's there's a, there's a lot of them. Uh, yeah. A lot of different genres doing that. So that's <laughs> really funny. Yeah. Um, you know, it, that's just another experience. Is right. is what that is where they're getting. Even if it's not technically one on one time, it's still people time. It's face time. It's, yeah. You know, it's real in in the flesh time. It's interesting you say that because one of the one of the parts of the the you know the genre that I'm in in metal uh, that that I don't see declining is attendance at large festivals uh -huh. and and almost everyone who goes to the festival rarely goes for the bands. The bands are like yeah, neat, yeah, but, it's like, it's you like know, oh yeah, that over there. <laughs> the people, the people sort of, they, they think of this festival as like a, a family reunion. Like right. everybody gets back together, everybody right. sees each other. Right, exactly. And gets to have a hug once a year right. or twice a year or something it, like that. Exactly, but yeah. it's in person, it's not yes. on, online. Exactly. Yeah. That's what people are paying for right now and that's where I think the, that's where I think the money is, is, is mm -hmm. making mm -hmm. experiences um, and that would be that connection with your your fan. Sure. So sure. yeah. Cool. So I guess to close it out, are there any? We've we've talked. There's been a lot of knowledge here. <laughs> are there any? Are there any of your favorite tips or tricks that you tell a lot of bands, or or maybe you know to the bands that are watching, yeah. um, something that maybe is more universal uh, tip and trick that you that you you know your your sort of your your regular tip that you give out to people. Yeah, I actually do have one. Oh, yeah, it's and it's uh, it's not going to be what you expect, though. I'm sure. Um, thank you notes, mm. hand written thank you notes, and that's the part everybody's going to forget. Everybody's going to send a thank you email, and I'm not knocking thank you emails, mm -hmm. but I'm telling you, hand written thank you notes. Nobody does them. They absolutely get noticed. Every single time you want to make a huge impression on somebody in the music business, you write them a handwritten thank you note. Mm. Uh, here's one of my favorite tips uh, that I teach in my booking class all the time. You don't get the gig, send a handwritten thank you note. And people are like, wow, well, why am I sending a thank you note for not getting the gig? Mm. Here's why you're sending a thank you note. Because a friend of mine did not get the gig for a particular festival, mm -hmm. sent a handwritten thank you note that just said, you know, thank you for your time. You can always find something to thank them for. Mm -hmm. Thank you for considering me, thank you, whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. And in his handwritten thank you note said, if something should come up, someone cancel or, you know, whatever, please let me know, I'd be happy to fill in. The day that his thank you note arrived, mm -hmm. someone had canceled. Aha. Who do you think they called? Like right there on the spot, not kidding. Uh, he got the gig and he got the gig like every year since then, you know, wow. so um, it's little tiny things like that. Mm -hmm. It's it's making an impression on someone in a positive, powerful way that nobody else is doing. And I, I have given this tip to tons of people and I actually have lots of stories of how it's helped people. Mm. Um, and there's a ton of people that won't do it. I just, I know they won't do it, which is why I can keep telling people and it's not going to be People aren't going to be inundated with thank you notes all of a sudden because most people won't do it. Gotcha. But it'll gotcha. make a huge impression. That's a very that's a great tip. That's amazing. Thanks. All right. Well, let us know where can we find you online. Let us know all the stuff, you know, all the internet yeah. links. Give give us give us the spiel. <laughs> give the whole give, deal. Yeah. Uh, well, Tell my... us your personal credit card number. The whole, everything. <laughs> okay. Deal. Uh, all right. So my company is Azalea Music Group, and you can find us. Can you spell that? I can. Azalea right. Music Group. Dot com. Well, actually, it's azaleamusic.com. Uh -huh. Make it easy. Uh, A-Z-A-L-E-A music.com. All right. You can put a little 
thing underneath I it. I will put so, a little thing underneath okay, it. Okay, all right, this spells it. So azaleamusic.com is where you can find me and my husband, Fett, and mm -hmm. everything that, that we do. Um, I also have a booking course, so if you're interested in doing your own booking, since we just happened to talk about that, mm -hmm, it's funny. Mm -hmm. um, ultimatebookingandtouring.com. Okay. All spelled out, all strung together, ultimatebookingandtouring.com. Uh, I'm Nancy Moran. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash Nancy Moran. Uh, I have my own website, nancymoran.com. I mean, I, I could go on and on, I guess, but All right. those are the main go in, ones. Go into Google, type Nancy Moran and <laughs> Azalea Booking and yeah. Ultimate Booking, and one more time. Ultimate Booking and Touring. Ultimate Booking and Touring.com. Nancy, thank you so much yeah. for your time. This was fun. It was fantastic was fun. to sit down with you. And we will see you guys next time. Remember, if you enjoyed this, if you want to see more, get on that Patreon, patreon.com slash Lords of the Trident. We will have all of the full uncut interviews, including a bunch more content from the Between the Waves Music Festival. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you next time.